your man Ain't no lot to see Research efforts to discover new antibiotics have stalled. In the post-World War II period following Alexander Fleming's breakthrough discovery of penicillin, new antibiotics were discovered and developed at a breathtaking pace. The golden age of antibiotic discovery peaked in the 1950s, and during this period, the pharmaceutical industry was the engine of innovation. But then, discoveries started dropping drastically from the 1980s onward, with no new antibiotic being produced in nearly three decades. Government, industry, and medical communities all agree that in the face of this mounting crisis, efforts to revive and improve the likelihood of successful drug discovery is essential. Enter Acurex Pharmaceuticals. They are a biopharmaceutical company focused on developing new antibiotics for difficult-to-treat infections such as MRSA, VRE, and DRSP. We face new threats every day, big and small. Acurex Pharma is on the front lines of health using technology to help us treat tomorrow's infections today. Acurex Pharmaceuticals. for you on Apple Records. And Mike Costa, I will think you'll agree, is the bad finger of this show. Thank you. You know why you're a bad finger? Because you wear a pinky ring, and that's the bad finger. Oh. Anybody with a pinky ring. I, excuse my audience has a pinky ring. Dang. We were talking, we were talking about, um, you know, before the show, before the, the break. Yep. About, I said, hey, guys, you step into my office. Ooh. And automatically you think, Something's bad, right? The whole studio went cold. Right. Er. Right. <laughs> right? Yeah. Nice. Or, 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 here's another example. You're driving around the freeway. Woo! Where do I have sirens? I got sirens here somewhere. Here. And you're like, and everybody's had that feeling, right? Yeah. Right behind you? Right. It's an ambulance. <laughs> oh. See how your patterns are faster than your thoughts? Big time. I don't know why I'm teaching that lesson today. Was, oh, I know why. Because I told the band I want to have them, I want to meet at 345. You just step in my office. They automatically think something bad. Yeah, they all it's started fun. looking it's at each good. other. It's like, good. It's a fantastic thing. We're going to have four less people in the band. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> now, why would it be your four? <laughs> I just demonstrated it a second time. <laughs> I'm going to do a little seminar, a little book and tape series. You can buy them in the back Boom, of the Boom, there it yes, is. Yes, you like yes. that? All right. Hey, uh, Stephen Cross Cree uh, is the CEO of a company called Danimer Scientific. Uh, first of all, welcome back to 110 million broadcast homes that we're in every single weeknight and 150 radio stations now in 175 countries on American Forces Radio Network. It's, uh, it's great to have you guys on. Um, I want you to think about something. Have you ever heard these words? Three words. Biodegradable plastic products. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've never even heard of it. Well, plastic products, last, don't they last until, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, they'll out, they'll outlive a nuclear war. I have um, I got call, I got called on by the the association. You know, the guy with the with the clipboard and a golf cart. It's a, you know, oh uh, yeah, big yeah, flashlight. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. he's a middle manager during his daytime job, but at, at <laughs> night he is the boss. <laughs> Hitting golf balls off of the uh, off the backyard into the canyon. Right. Well, yeah, that's a, that's an environmental problem, right? right. Not if they're biodegradable, biodegradable golf, golf balls. Ball. Hey. Thank you. Right. So the maker of biodegradable golf balls is uh, Danimer Scientific. No, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> they don't do. Stephen, how are you, sir? No I'm pressure. Good, Bob. How are you? I've completely hijacked. It's completely. But but if you wanted to, you could make biodegradable golf balls. I'm sure. Hey, welcome to the program. Great to have you along. Um, uh, I want to talk about this thing called plastic products that are biodegradable and, com and, and compostable because I know that they're scratching the surface of that technology. You guys seem to have wrangled that and are now the tip of the spear of that kind of good news. So talk about it. So uh, the way this works, um, we're reproducing something that occurs in nature every day. Um, if you think about a, a, a tree and has leaves and a leaf falls to the ground, there's carbon in that leaf that's you know, captured from the, from the sun and the atmosphere. And it, it, when it falls to the ground, there are bacteria in the soil that will consume it. And the way that works is they break the, the carbon down in that leaf and, and synthesize it into another form of carbon for their own metabolic purposes that allow them to uh, you know, reproduce and move around and, and, and do their thing. 
And so what we do is recreate that process that's been going on for millennia in nature. We recreate that in a fermentation. So wait, so process. what you're talking about is composting, right? With your first yeah. your, your well, example. No, that's yeah. Technically, uh, it's it's biodegradation when okay. the bacteria uh, directly consumes the material. Uh, composting, uh, you can be the beginning of biodegradation, but it usually requires heat and moisture to get the product to break down. But a purely biodegradable product is just consumed by bacteria. And that's how this works. So we, we feed vegetable oil uh, to these bacteria in a, in a fermentation vessel and allow them to get fat and happy. Yeah. And then we break that cell wall open and extract the, the, the carbon from inside the cell wall. And, and the beauty of this is that is the plastic resin. So we make an article out of it, and if it accidentally gets into nature, it will be consumed by bacteria. So these are the products that Danimer makes, and, 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 and let's talk about that, because you have a signature product called Nodax. Am I saying that correctly? Nodax. Nodax. Yeah, Nodax is the name for our uh, PHA, uh, polyhydroxyalkanoate. Uh, we take that PHA, and we combine it with other degradable materials and, and, and inert group materials found in nature, like calcium and things like that and uh, make them functional for use in actual applications. So I have a, a couple examples here. That's a Starbucks straw. Uh, Starbucks is using our straws in North America. Mike had, be my, this, Mike had one of those behind his ear most of the 80s, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, we'll edit, Grab the, uh, we'll, edit, we'll edit that out. <laughs> Sorry. But, but so wait a second. So your big, giant, green Starbucks straws, that's you guys, huh? That's us. You know yeah. where, do you know where we need you? Everywhere. Sea World. Everywhere. Right? Where? Sea World. Oh, yeah. Yo, so we, oh, yeah. of course, you may be watching us in, in New York City, folks. You may be listening to us in Baghdad, for God's sakes, on American Forces Radio. But San Diego, uh, one, of the big, one of the big issues has been Sea World, uh, the, the sea life, first sure. of all. Um, I'm not sure a great idea of putting, you know, whale into a swimming pool is great in the first place, but let's add insult to injury by giving them plastic straws with Slurpee residue in them. Yeah. And, and that, that's been an issue here. I, the, the word mandate comes up. Uh, when I think about this, Stephen, because there are more and more municipalities and governments are demanding that we remove plastic from our universe, which is which I would argue is probably a good thing. That's got to help you guys, because because uh, you, you, per your uh, example there with Starbucks, I think you have a Dunkin' Donuts, you got your Yankee Stadium, your Mercedes Benz Stadium, so on and so forth. This is this has got to be just the tip of the spear because those are corporations and and, and municipal uh, venues that want to be ahead of the curve. But there's going to be governments that are going to they're going to make companies do this, and I think that gives you a, gl a global footprint, does it not? Yeah, that's happening uh, right now. Um, you know, th these bans, uh, you know, can be good, but th they can also be bad, just depending on on uh, how well written they are. You know, a lot of the bans will exclude any possible solution because people don't really understand yet that there are alternatives. Um, so we we uh, you know, plastic serves a useful function, and it's. It's helped, you know, humanity a lot, just being able to preserve food and things like that. I mean, think back 100 years ago, you couldn't carry a plastic chip bag around and have a snack. You right, know? true. So, so there's a lot of things that, that we, we, you know, we would rather not see a complete ban. We'd, we'd want to see them, you know, leave room for compostable and degradable solutions like ours. I mean, as you know, like paper straws, you know, they're horrible. They're horrible. That is the bane of human existence. Yeah. yeah. I swear. The worst. I'd rather get pulled over and get a ticket than have a paper straw. Except for the old days where they had the little Remember those? You know, that is so universal yeah. sound for You yeah, know what I'm talking about, don't you? Oh, yeah. Remember those sippy straws? Hey, exactly. Steven, how long um, is the biodegradable, the compostable process? Like if this thing gets yeah, Good into question. Yeah. So it, it depends on the amount of bacteria that are present wherever that item ends up. Um, you know, the more bacteria there is to begin with, the faster the, the process will uh, take place. If there's a small amount of bacteria, it just takes a little longer. But also it takes uh, longer or shorter depending on the thickness or how big the item is. So think about my example of a leaf falling to the ground. Yeah. That leaf is going to go away pretty quickly. But if that tree falls over, guess what? It's got the same carbon in it, but it's just going to take longer to go away. Yeah, so in other words, it's going to take my... It's going to take my cost a lot of years to decompose. I can tell you that because you know if it's a matter yeah. of if it's a thickness thing, thickness. It's my facelift. Stephen, will you come back on the air with us? This is fantastic. We need to spend more time with you. Holy cow! You're going to come on another day. Stephen Cross Creek, Danimer Scientific. Look at their stock symbol DNMR. Go to Danimer.com. We're going to have him back.
in the weeks to come here. The future of plastics is here.